Cables, cables, cables. You need them for everything. And you know, nowadays, when I go to a gig, I have to bring this case with me. Guitar cables, stereo cables, XLR, microphone cables, speaker cables. It's endless. And the thing is, how do I know if these things are working or not? Well, I built myself a little tester for all these types of cables that I can take with me. And I'm going to share that with you. So here's the schematic diagram for the tester. And it includes the TRS or stereo jacks, the batteries, the diode, the LED, and the switch. And it also includes some optional items an XLR jack and plug and two additional test points so you could use this device for general continuity testing. Here's the switch S1, the bare switch looking at its back. And here we have the first wiring consisting of four wires. Then we add one, two, three more wires. And then we add three leads. Then we add three more leads going to the left side. And now we're up to wiring the batteries, the diode, and the LED. Now here are the four devices we're going to wire together. The two batteries, the diode, and this is a, just a common diode. This is a 1N4001. And here's a red LED. You notice on the diode there's a, there's a stripe around the diode. And that's the marker we're going to use to go to the LED. Now I could take these two batteries, go out and buy a battery holder and place them in, but to be perfectly honest, for the low amount of current this device is going to use, these batteries will last as long as their shelf life, which is usually up to five years. So rather than do that, I'm just going to tape these two together and solder some wires to them. I've taped the batteries together, and the first thing I have to do is connect these two ends together with some wire. So I'm going to use a little clamp to hold this up straight like that and I'm going to use this which is lead free tinning flux now when you solder the solder has flux in it but this is such a unique job that I'm going to actually use some of this flux and I got this flux because I sometimes do some plumbing and this flux is used in plumbing to connect copper pipes and fittings together. You flux them and then you solder them. So I'm going to take a just a brush and put some flux on that one and this one. Then I'm going to take my solder and soldering iron and solder now that is soldered together. I'm going to turn it around and we're going to put the leads on here. We're going to do the same thing. A little bit. Now I'm going to take the positive lead and the lead without the stripe side around it. The stripe is to the right. I'm taking the left side of the lead. The left lead. I'm just going to twist these two together. Now I have the battery with the leads attached and the lead coming from the plus side of the battery to the side of the diode without the stripe. Now I have to attach the LED. And since I'm not sure exactly which side is right, I'm going to use some alligator clips and first attach it to this side. And I don't see any light, so we'll slip it, flip it around, and we'll attach it to this side, and up oh, there it is. That's the light. So this side here is going to go into here, and just like before, I'm going to connect the two together, put a little soldering flux on there and then solder them together. But since the LED can be kind of heat sensitive, I'm going to use the alligator clip and put it on there because that will suck any excess heat away. 
Okay. And then I'm finally going to take one more lead. And I'm going to attach it to the other side. There we go. Now if I've done this all right, and I connect these two wires together, the wire from the battery and the wire from the LED, the light should go off. The LED should go on. And as you can see, it is on, it is off, and it's working fine. Now I'm attaching the black lead from the battery to the switch. And I'm going to take the red lead and attach it. Now we have one final wiring to do, and that's to attach the two stereo jacks to these cables. So I'm going to start with T, which is the brown lead. That's T. S is the green lead. And the remaining R is the red lead. So there we are. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the switch, the left side of the switch. Great. Now before we install this in the case, I think we should give it a try. So I'm going to take this out of that little holder I had, which was just a piece of wood with a quarter inch hole in it. And I'm going to attach a control knob, move it all the way to the left, and then take a regular guitar cable and plug it into the two TRS jacks. Okay. Now as you see, position one it's bright, two bright, three bright, four is off, five is off, and six is bright. And if you look at the label, you'll see that that's the appropriate sequence. So once I take this off, out, you see the light goes off, and in fact absolutely no current is flowing in the circuit, and that's why the battery lights is now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this in the case. Here are the parts for the case. This is the top, this is the bottom, left and right side, top and bottom sides, and the four corner posts that will help connect everything together. I've glued the posts to the short side pieces, flush on one end and set back on the other end, and flush on the sides. Now I'm going to take the side pieces and I'm going to glue them like this. I've glued the two long sides to the two short sides, making sure that we have the recess on the bottom and it's flush on the top. Now I'm going to take the top piece, top piece and glue it on like that. I've sanded and rounded over the sides and I'm ready to put the bottom on. Here's the bottom and I've pre-drilled for number six by one half inch screws and I'll put those in. The screws are in and the case is ready to be populated with the electronics. I finished the case by painting it and I also cut out the front label, glued it onto the case and then put some uh, laminating plastic over it. So this, this case is ready to go. So let's take a look inside. Here's switch S1. Here's the right and the left stereo jack. The LED that's been press fit through this hole. 
and the diode. Here are the batteries that I've sort of stuffed in here. And you might be asking, what are these? These are the optional test points. I've just taken a screw and two nuts and attached the wire on one end and gone over to the T-lug on this jack. Done the same here, gone over to the T-lug on this jack. If I place this on the first position T and I just press these two together, I get an indication of continuity. So this is just a simple continuity tester. If I take a normal guitar cord, which is a TS cord, I go red, 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 black, black, red. You notice on lead lit is 111, let off, dump bump, and then back on. So that indicates a good cable. Now I'm going to take a stereo cable, that's a TRS, plug that in, and we're going to go lit, 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 off, off, off. If we look at this legend here, it says for TRS and XLR, it should be lit, 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 off, off, off. So that is good as well. But I don't have a way to do an XLR because I haven't attached a, the optional XLR jack and plug. What I do have is an old microphone cable. And the cable itself has an open in the middle, but the ends are fine. So I've cut off the two ends. One is a jack and one is a plug. And I'm going to put these in here and attach them in parallel to, this, to these jacks and I'll be able to check an XLR cable. I've connected the XLR jack and plug to the two TRS connectors. I've used a cable tie to prevent the cable from pulling out of the hole. So here's a standard XLR microphone cable. I'm going to plug this in to the tester. There we go. See how this works. On, 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 off, 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 indicating that the cable is good. So now I have a tester that can test TS and TRS cables, XLR cables, and do continuity tests, all in one neat package.